Hello everyone. Welcome to C Academy YouTube channel. My name is Velen Ngosi. In today's lesson, uh, we solve a previous question paper of life science, which was written in November 2023. So it's for life sciences grade 12. So the question paper uh, is based on meiosis. So here is the question paper. Uh, this question paper was, is from the Department of Basic Education, November 2023. Uh, it's for life science. Uh, meiosis falls under paper 2, which is section B, and then uh, question 2. So, uh, 2.1, here are the questions. Uh, if you want, you can pause the video and then try to answer these questions here. So, I hope you can see them. Then, without wasting more time, uh, let me give you the answers. So, 2.1 say, The diagram below represents two stages of meiotic cell division. So, we know that meiotic cell division is a, it's a process of meiosis. Uh, we have meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So, this diagram, uh, we are told that they, they show only two stages. So, by looking at the diagram 1, we see that... Uh, there are chromosomes, we have 8 chromosomes, and then we still have a nucleus that is disappearing. Uh, and the centrioles, if you see we have centrioles each side of the, of the cell. And then, so before we start, let me give a labels. Label A, these are the chromosomes that are homologous or a homologous chromosome. Uh, they are touching each other, so this this pair of chromosomes are called bivalent. So, B, I will say bivalent. And then, in diagram 2, we, uh, the chromosomes are lining at the equator. So, we have 8 chromosomes which are lining at the equator. So, this, pro this is a uh, metaphase 1. So, this is metaphase 1, while this one is prophase 1. So, this is... The face is metaphase. The metaphase one, and then to label a uh, number B, it's central. So the centrals, and then uh, the number C, it's spindle fiber. Spindle fiber are formed between two centrals so we have a centrals on the other side and the one on the other side they form spindle fibers and then number d uh, represent homologous chromosomes so but these homologous chromosomes so uh, i think i've covered everything so this is diagram one is prophase one. It's a prophase one of meiosis. Uh, here it's a process of crossing over. It's where uh, these chromosomes are changing uh, genetic material. Like here, uh, here there is an exchange of genetic material. So this process is called the crossing over. Then let's go to the questions. Uh, Question number one said, identify the part, uh, number A, the part B. So, uh, part B, it's a central. So, this part are centrals. So, I will say number A, uh, B, it's a central. And then number B, say, identify the part C. So, C, the spindle fiber. C is a spindle fiber. Uh, let's go to the next question. And then the next question, 2.1.2, say, identify the phase represented by the diagram 1. So here is the diagram 1. So like I said, these chromosomes are in the process of crossing over. So crossing over it occurs during prophase 1. So 2.1.2, it's prophase 1. 
and then another next question say give three reasons for your answer in question 2.1.2 so you must give a reason why you say why we say the diagram one is on profile one so uh, number one you can say uh, if you see the nucleus is disappearing so you can say nuclear membrane is disappearing And then number two, uh, you can see the centrals moves uh, in the opposite direction. If you see, we have a central here. We have a central here. So, central moved in the opposite direction. And then number three, you can see spindle fiber is forming. So if you can see here, the spindle fiber are forming. so this is the evidence that tells us that this process here it's prophase one so nuclear membrane is disappearing uh, centrals moves to opposite direction and then spindle fibers are forming so these are the three reasons why i say this uh, facing is prophase one so going to the next question uh, the next question say describe the process taking place at a so the process that taking place at a is a crossing over so here we have to describe the crossing over we know that uh, the function of the crossing over is to increase variation by taking a uh, genetic material from one chromosome from one maternal chromosome and then adding with a uh, that material to the maternal chromosome and, and vice versa so there's exchange of materials so we have to explain the process so for us to be able to get all the marks i think it's important to write the heading so here i will start by writing uh, the process of crossing over so 2.1.4 uh, the process of crossing over Then, uh, number one, I will say it occurs during the prophase one. It occurs during the prophase one. And then, uh, number two, I will say uh, exchange of genetic material at the chiasma. So, uh, here, there is exchange of genetic material. This, this position where these chromosomes are touching each other, we call it chiasma like here this is called chiasma so i will say exchange of genetic material at the chiasma and then the results i'll say uh, this result with chromosome with genetic mixture so after the exchange of material like here if you see this chromosome there is a genetic mixture a, a part of this chromosome is here and then another part so there is a we have a chromosome with genetic mixture so this is how we can explain the process of crossing over you can say we start by when does it occur and then it occurs during the prophase one uh, where does it occur it at the exchange of genetic material at chiasma and then the results uh, this result with chromosomes with genetic mixture so the chromosome now have a genetic mixture then going to the next question uh, 2.1.5 identify the phase represented in diagram 2 so diagram 2 we say it's a metaphase 1 so uh, 2.1.5 Number A, say it's a metaphase one. And then number B, say describe the difference in the events that takes place the phase mentioned in A and the same phase during mitosis. So this phase is called metaphase one. And then we have to uh, show the difference between a metaphase one of meiosis 
and the metaf and the metaphase of mitosis. So number B. Let me write it here. Uh, let me say uh, during a uh, metaphase uh, of mitosis. During metaphase of mitosis, a uh, individual chromosome line up at the equator. So. And then metaphase one of meiosis. So during the metaphase one of, of meiosis, a homologous pair of chromosome line up at the equator. So so this is the different one. It's single chromosomes line up at the equator. This is for my in mitosis, and then in metaphase one of meiosis, uh, pairs of chrom uh, homologous chromosome line up at the equator. So this is the different. Uh, now, getting to the next question, uh, two point one point six. Say, describe the result at the end of the meiosis if the chromosomes at D fail to separate. So if it happened that these chromosomes here, they do not separate. So this process is called non-disjunctions. So we have to explain uh, the result of non-disjunctions if it takes place during the metaphase one. Remember, non-disjunction can take place in metaphase one or in metaphase two. So this time they ask us what will happen, what will be the result if this process happens in metaphase one. So because it takes place during the meiosis one so at the end of meiosis one so here we have eight chromosomes so if you see we have eight chromosomes so after meiosis we were supposed to have four cells with four chromosomes each then if this non disjunction takes place during the metaphase one uh, at the end of meiosis one end of meiosis one Uh, we will have one cell with five chromosomes and another cell with three chromosomes because of this non disjunction that has taken place. So we'll have uh, one, one cell with five chromosomes and then another cell with three chromosomes. And then this is what will happen during the end of meiosis 1. And then let's go to the end of meiosis 2. And then during the end of meiosis 2, uh, these cells, the cell with a uh, 5 chromosome will produce two cells also with 5 chromosomes. So at the end of meiosis 2, we will have two cells with 5 chromosomes. And then this, the other one will produce uh, two cells with three chromosomes. So this is the result. And uh, we will end up at the end of meiosis two, we'll end up with two cells with five chromosomes and the two cells with three chromosomes. And we were supposed to have uh, four cells with each, each cell with four chromosomes, but uh, because there is an error that has taken place. We end up with two cells with uh, five chromosomes and then two cells with three chromosomes. This is the result of what will happen if uh, the chromosomes fails to separate at metaphase one. So this is the result. So uh, this is the end of this uh, lesson. If you have watched this video to this far, thank you very much. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel uh, if you are studying good luck with your studies thank you very much god bless you